Tuesday's Tuesday, day one. Been a minute since we've been out on a real job. Been out in the shop for the last six, seven, eight weeks. <clears throat> We're trying to get back at it. Guys getting their saws and everything ready. It is froze up solid. Well, it ain't solid, but it's froze up pretty good. We're gonna try to get us a fire built. We're gonna try to get us a fire built up here and get us something rolling. I bet somebody robbed it off the job up there, didn't they? Well, let's get at it and we'll see if we can't figure something else out. Okay, folks, we found the uh, found the bone holder. It was up higher in the cab than what I normally put, so it was hid. But we're getting started with... Uh, rubbing us out of place. We've got to get us a place set up uh, to get our fire going. And we can't do that until we get some of this stuff out of our way. So I'm uh, ripping and tearing here. Uh, we're going get to us, uh, get us a little bit staged up here in the pile. The guys are getting their saws all wound up, uh, getting all their safety stuff on like, we're, like we always wear. And uh, while they're doing that, I'm, I'm getting started. I'll just tell you right now, folks, I have missed the cab of a machine. Dang, gone, I missed this thing. And you know, I get tired of grubbing brush after a little while, but right now, I am in heaven. Got the hydraulic getting warmed up. We are, uh, we're good to go. I got the front glass opened up. Uh, to be honest, I'm getting a little chilly. I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little chilly. So I don't know how long that thing will stay up. It's about, uh, it's about, I think it's about 18 degrees here right now. So everything's good and froze up. That's why I'm trying to get, I should have done been here a lot earlier, but we was having some, uh, getting everything drawn up, what we was to do and how we was to do and everything. It kind of put us behind the day, getting started. So right now, uh, I am getting it. Get us a hole, we're getting ready to get us a hole established so we can get us a fire going. But we got to get to burning uh, right now ASAP. Uh, with as much material as we have to burn, we need to get it burning, get it going. I need to try to get us an area clear, get us our fire circle done. Because uh, if we ain't careful, we don't want to start no forest fires around here. I didn't. It is most definitely an easy place here to get a fire going. Now, there's no burn ban in effect till March. I think it's March 1st, which is just about two weeks away. We do have a burn ban to get started here in West Virginia where we're working. Um, so we're right now we can operate without a burn permit, but in a few more weeks, we will be required to have a burn permit. So, uh, we, you know, the, the lease if we can work now without a permit, you know, what we'd like to do, uh, just because it, it's, for one, it's cheaper, two, it's uh, less uh, regulations. Now, I'm not going to say that we don't need regulations, I'm just saying that it will be less regulations. I guess they are, uh, they're getting zapped up over there. But I'm trying to get this, trying to get this here opened up so we can get us a hole dug, so we can get us a fire going before it starts to fall out, because that pickup truck's going to have a heck of a time coming across through there if it gets stalled out because it is wet. So I'm trying to get us right in here in this area is where I'm working at on trying to get us the fire deck built. That's a pretty good size from there. But this stuff is it when it's pine it's cold. It's really brittle. And uh really brittle so it's bust. It bust up really easy. 
There's a few more right in here. I think this is where I was really anticipating, somewhere in this general area.
typically what I do is I take my dirt out. I try to, you want to get them leaves all knocked off, covered up, whatever you've got to do, because them's the fire hazard. The leaves are the fire hazard. <clears throat> you want to get you a pit dug down enough to where it covers your, your straw bales is not too far below the ground level and then you can't get air to it. But you want to get them where your accelerant stays contained. You've got to keep your accelerant contained. And I got three straw bales, so I planned on a pretty uh, large fire. I usually use two. I had them grab three, and I may just use two of the three and then save the other one in case we got to give this thing a little jump start. So what I'm going to do now is I'm kind of building a dike wall and I'm covering up all those old <coughs> rotten leaves. <coughs> getting kind of cleaned up here above him. I, I try to, I'll be tramming up above this fire too, I'm sure. I haven't 
got in there very deep. Come on back. Get ready. Yeah, I've been burning about 45 minutes or so. Guys have really been pumping air in it. I got both of them that are pumping air into it. I think we got him. We got him on fire pretty good on the bottom. I think we're pretty good. I'm probably getting ready to cut him back off of the air and get the stalls out. So we can start sawing up some of this stuff. I got quite a bit of it laid out here. I'm gonna cut this stuff here up a little bit. Just gonna cut them in half. Don't have to do anything major. I just wanna cut them up enough to where they'll fit on the fire. They're pretty easy. We've got some holes in this ground out in here for sure because I'm gonna guess it's probably where all that water has been going through the ground for a while. Yeah, we got some pretty good, pretty good spread going on now. Wind's picking up a little bit, so we're gonna hold back on putting anything else on there. I'm not too worried, but I just don't like, I don't like testing, testing the waters too much. It needs to rain a little bit, and we're not expecting any rain till Thursday night, so we're gonna have some time to work here. So, all right. Good morning, folks. It's supposed to be a really nice day today. It's supposed to be about 65 and sunny. Uh, it's going to be windy, so I don't know how long we'll get to burn. Um, just because of the fire hazards and stuff. Um, the boys, they're on their way uh, over to the gas station to get us some gas. Uh, they out a couple of gallons of gas yesterday with the blowers and the chainsaws. So they went to go get us some gas. Uh, C.J. Hughes is finishing up this morning with um, hauling uh, dirt and rock out of my shop lot down there. Uh, they told me that they should have everything cleaned up today, and then they was going to bring some guys down there to kind of hammer and move some rock and stuff around. Told them they would have to haul everything out. If they had some rock left, they could leave the rock. I could probably sell the rock here and there. Uh, in fact, I got a guy looking for some rock he stopped by the office the other day asking about some rock so we um 
lots lots gonna look good the guy was telling me from cj hughes they might talk to me about using uh, my place down there for a surge pile a uh, surge lot pile so they can put some sand and gravel and stuff down there and i said yeah, that's fine with me i don't i don't care a bit buddy uh so we got all that figured out this morning and we're on our way to the job um it's 30 about 34 35 degrees this morning ain't too bad it's still not cold and you know it still ain't warm but it's not as cold been watching seeing the maples are starting to get really red on the ends and even some of the buds are starting to bud out it's it's you know it's beautiful it's looking absolutely beautiful so static about springtime it's about a year ago today uh, about a year ago today after, a year ago today was the day after the ice storm um, a lot of you guys may not know if we had a, a horrific horrific horrible ice storm about a year ago <clears throat> and it just crippled this whole area where we're at i mean it was absolutely astonishing how nasty it was so uh glad we didn't have one of them um and we're gonna go over here and get us uh, get our fire built back up get it rocking and stocking and we'll see how long we can burn before the wind picks up too bad um and then we'll just have to concentrate on just uh, staging everything up. It's supposed to rain. I got mixed mixed messages this morning about when it was supposed to rain tomorrow. I couldn't tell if it's supposed to rain tomorrow evening, tomorrow afternoon, or you know what. So we'll uh, we'll have to see about that. But that ain't no big deal. It starts raining. I just keep burning brush over there. So you guys uh, stay tuned, and we'll get uh, get something rolling on here. All right, getting everything warmed up, and you guys are getting ready to start greasing stuff. So. We've got our fire going here. Burnt down pretty good last night. Take him, give him a little stir or two there and round him up. Maybe blow some air on him, and she'll be in good shape. But... This is kind of, kind of where we're at. I think I got about, I think I got about everything cleared on that end that we're going to need to. Uh, this customer is a, these customers here are really good people. I've known them, I've known them for a long time. They're actually hometown. Well, the husband is actually a hometown um, resident, same as me. Grew up in Salt Rock, so we uh, we know each other. But he. Uh, he wants to keep as many trees and stuff as he can. So we're just basically just taking out what we have to for the uh, cut and level. And over in here is where he's gonna build his shop, garage, barn, ever what you wanna call it. And um, we're thinking the driveway is gonna come up, we'll swing in probably gonna go in between these trees and come up here to the house and it's gonna go out there to the garage it's kind of what we got idea we'll put a big pond in down here in the in the field uh, a little later there's a few pines in here that we're gonna keep and saw for the for the cabin I'm gonna try to get me a cabin framed up and built to uh, dried in this year and then this winter, I'll start working on it. Uh, I'll start working on getting it uh, actual functional cabin, but even where I can actually stay in it tonight. This, this winter, I'll work on finishing it out, putting everything in it. Anyway, so thinking about clearing a the line, there's them two big, there's one oak, one oak, and the second oak, is right through there those are two big oaks we're going to stay the house is staying on this side of the two big oaks and they want it to we kind of visualized the two big sicky moors as the house being directly in behind them so that's putting the house right over in this general area so all this stuff has got to come out all that stuff has got to come out of here probably going to take a couple of these here down just to kind of align leave that oak in the back let's leave that oak in the back leave that hardwood back through there and i basically just want to take this whole line of here out that'll allow us enough room 
to bring our driveway in without any problems. And we still got to clear, all this has got to be cleared out. So we still got a lot of clearing to do, but we worked on it about three quarters of a day yesterday. By the time we got the hoe over here and got everything rolling, you know, it was a little bit later in the day. So we'll be fine. There's still a lot of chainsaw work. Should be just about ready to start bringing in the uh, skid steer to actually gobble the brush and jockey the brush off the hill because we're going to get pretty far away from our fire. So, still nice, still a really beautiful piece of property. Beautiful, beautiful layout. I think it's going to turn out really nice. So, I'm really excited about it. We're going to push this down over the hill and we're going to kind of feather all that in to where it ain't it's going to be look more of a of a nice little knoll instead of a instead of a hill so well, it's supposed to be 34 degrees but i'm telling you i think it's a heck of a lot colder than that my hands is cold so we're gonna do a little bit it's kind of flatter up here on top and he really they ain't set on like exactly where they want their house so that's a good thing they said basically I talked to Amanda, just let me clear everything. I said, then you can pick out where you want your house and then we'll just do the cut in the field from there, which is always a great thing when the customer entrusts you enough to, to your word that you're not trying to hurt them. See, there's a nice little log. It ain't very big, but that'll be ideal for me and the old man to saw on our meal. That's about a 14 inch. That's good. Here's one here. There's a few laying here and there. Those would be really nice when I saw them and I saw all them and use that in poplar in my cabin. Very excited about that. So there's the two big oaks. And I don't really want to clear, I'll probably just clear up the pines that's leaning toward his house and that's it. Uh, he, he's very, very stern on Take, take no more than you have to. So, uh, I'll probably, here's a little cedar, and I'm thinking I'm probably gonna just kinda go straight down through here and just kinda clear this out. And then he said we can even leave whatever we need to leave down yonder, we can leave that. Which, you know, I understand, privacy. But that's gonna be a heck of a view. It's gonna be a beautiful view. All right, let's go to here and get at it. Well, good morning, folks. Today is Wednesday. No, today's Thursday. And we are back here on the brush burning job. Fixing to go over here and get our, uh, get our fire going again. Uh, it's going to rain. It's going to start raining here. Uh, I think about mid-morning or so and then it's really going to come down about noon so we'll try to get uh, I didn't really want I don't really want to you know get get a fire going like really hot because it's supposed to be kind of windy and stuff we don't want to set nobody's places on fire but we need to get it going uh, pretty decent Need to get it going pretty decent before the rain comes because it's hard to get wet brush to burn. But we're gonna go over here and try to get this thing stoked up. I don't know what what oaks are doing. Oaks is standing over there in the middle of it like a big goober. So hang tight. Alright, we got Dillinger over there. He is raking everything up. Um getting everything clean what we cleared yesterday oaks uh waiting patiently for uh he's waiting patiently for something to cut i'm just basically kind of just running up this little this is our last little section to clear and i'm running up through here to kind of pull and kind of clear a path because we're gonna have to get up in here and cut this uh these are some big trees right here um, I want to come up in here and cut. And I really, I really need to get this stuff out of here today. And the reason being is this is the biggest, this is some of the biggest stuff on this, uh, on this clearing job. 
and uh, I'm telling you, I hate this foam horn. Um, this is some of the biggest stuff on this clearing job uh, to clear. And if if I don't get if I don't get this big oak out of here and get it down there where I can get it on fire, then then I'm gonna have a heck of a time getting it burnt because after the weekend. Uh, I'll come over here because we're only about six, seven miles or so from the shop working. I'll come over here uh, every day and kind of just stoke a fire up, kind of piddle all weekend on it. I won't be over here all weekend, but I will be over here uh, throughout the day uh, to keep the fire kind of burning because we're going to get some good rains and it's going to get everything uh, wettened up real good to where we can... Uh, we can burn without having any kind of fire hazard and I don't have to have a burn permit right now so I don't have any regulations as far as I got to stay here with it 24 hours a day I'm not saying that's not a bad idea but people normal people don't have um, as much dirt tore up as I do I mean I've got there ain't hardly no dirt or shoot there ain't hardly no vegetation nowhere around Everything's down in the dirt. So the fire hazard's a little bit different for me as it would be a typical uh, farmer or landowner, let's say. Uh, I mean, my fire, and most of the time, my fires are burned way down before I ever think about leaving it behind. So I'm not too, too awfully concerned with that. Tell you now, it this is a this is kind of a bear of a spot to be in trying to clear. Uh, I'm in between these two little little mounds of dirt here. It's like a little. I'd say it used to be a good cattle path or something other. And of course, the water just kept running down and running down and running down it. And then whenever uh, that happens, uh, it creates you know erosion. And then you have uh, a trench forms in your pastures it happens all the time so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fish everything out of here that I can I want to get it opened up so that way whenever oak uh, goes to get down in there goes around in here to cut uh, he can see where his feet's going to be you don't have to worry about him tripping up on stuff because he's got to get all the way up through here and it's, it's got some pretty good vines and I really didn't even want to do this section at all uh, I was not looking forward to having to do this. I was really hoping I could get by without it, but the customer, um, in order to do what the customer wants, we're going to have to get in here. So, it is what it is. I have, I, I keep my tracks kind of loose because uh, it, it helps on the, the wear on the pins and the bushings, but uh, dang gone, I'm telling you, I, I, I think I got them just a little bit too loose, or left them, I got them going a little bit too loose. I want to tighten them up. And I need to order that kit, that guide kit, that way I can weld me a, a, a rail guide on it. Uh, so that way they'll, they, they keep wanting to derail, and they're not going to derail, they're not going to fly off there, but man, it's really wearing on my, on my rollers. And, you know, we don't typically, this machine was not designed to do what I do with it. Uh, on the sidling, on the heels, clearing brush and whatnot. So, uh, whenever, you know, a machine's not designed for something, you, uh, you have the tendency to wear components quicker than what they were designed to wear. So, but it's very important for us to get this clean and cleared out because we're the ones doing the excavating part of it and you don't want to be cutting grades and then you can run into a big old bunch of uh you run into a big old bunch of garbage in your cut and then you got to do something with it so it's very important that we get all this stuff cleaned up and get it on the fire and get it burnt and get it uh get rid of it that way we don't have to deal with it no more after after this we don't have to you know when we're in here moving dirt we want to be moving dirt. We don't want to be taking trees down. That's what I was explaining to the customer. You know, if you've got any kind of ideas or doubts that you know this thing might be in the way or we'll deal with it later, I said, we're not dealing with it later. This is a one-time thing. We've got to get it cleared. I'm not starting a fire back up to burn five trees. You know, I said, we gotta, we gotta, you know, do everything wisely. I'm 
telling you, I I usually wear a vest and that's what I hold on my radios and stuff with and just not being very prepared. Been out of practice. Plum out of practice on this job. Been in the shop for so long it's made me lazy. Okay, we got a pretty good bit of stuff we can probably pull right here. That's what I'm gonna do it now. Be nice to get that little shanty right there. Now we're just going to start backing out. We got it. I think I got enough up in there. I mean, I may want to make one more trip. I don't know. Let's, let's get back up here so we can get us a bite. Oh, there we go. This is a uh, pine log right here. So I'll try to lay him over in here. I'm going to break him in half. Well, he's not too bad. We can go ahead and put him on the fire. He'll, he'll fit on there. Go ahead and navigate him out him laid out here. See, I shovel everything up into this kind of stuff, and then Dillinger will come through with the skid steer after a while, and he'll gobble that up. He'll haul it down there closer to the fire, where I don't have to carry it so far. Looking pretty good. Getting cleaned up. I really dread getting them big old oaks out there. Them oaks is be good firewood for somebody you know who couldn't burn it now because it's been laying down so it's soaking wet but man it'd be a really good firewood beautiful beautiful day yesterday it gave us some hope for what's coming up soon enough i can't wait till warm weather i can't wait to you know get back into normal normal routines working where if it rains it don't hurt anything the next day you can pretty much go right back to work how much we're going to get to work on on this job. It's supposed to be rainy today. There'll be some pretty good rains coming. So it's going to be pretty rainy today, and I think tomorrow it's going to be cold and kind of, kind of just like a snowy mix. But I don't think it's supposed to be like all day. I think it's just supposed to be first thing in the morning. So I'll come over here tomorrow. The boys will have to come in for a couple hours and help me get the fire uh, back up and running. And then after that, they'll they'll head home. All their, they'll have all their time in today, tomorrow. That's pretty much about all you're going to get. The rest of it's all just kind of dirty, rotten leaves and stuff. So now let's uh, let's start kicking down. Let's start kicking down these uh, sicky moors and stuff I've got laying here. One good thing about it, you know, a smaller hoe like this, a 130, you can actually fit it. You can actually fit it in these tighter spots between all these trees but you know it it, it don't have the uh it don't have the power and stuff that a 210 would have so you kind of got to have a trade-off a 160 160 is a really nice clearing machine too but uh and they are stouter but the 130, I can get it. Shoot, I can get it around a lot easier. Try to go ahead and get him all the way. Here on radio. I'll try to get everything rolled around there. I need to get me a little strap or a bungee cord where I can hook my radio up up there. lost the front glass. The roots are kind of stiff. They give me all kinds of problems here. Come on, baby. I'm trying to knock all that dirt off before I get it loose off the ground. Now I just kind of, I want to move it down here where it's out of the way for the next, the next uh, tree top, tree out. This one here, this one here ain't gonna be nothing. You just kind of push on it. I can probably go ahead, and, probably go ahead and I'll break this one up. Sometimes I'll just kind of just bite them like that, and that'll shear it right off. Let's see if I can drag that one back. Down there 
put stuff in piles. That's the hard part. Like I'm dragging that thing to me. If I pull on it too hard or twist on it, bite it too hard, it'll break it. <clears throat> stuff cleaned up before it rains on it that way we can get it burnt it looks a lot better makes great and everything a lot better that's what i like whenever i get a good clean clear is it's like when i go to start cutting and feeling great you know everything is is pretty much straightforward you don't have to worry about having a bunch of rakings and stuff you got to deal with all that and now we're just going to kind of we're going to dig this off and make that transition in and out of that ravine a little bit softer that way we're not binding ourselves up because we need to go over there and get them two trees next they're both pines we go over and get these two and that way we can open up our see if you got this one here in the back get it first because it's in the front on the top and I always, you know, something like that, I can break it up, but I'm gonna have two more to throw right beside it so he can run his saw right down them all. I'm gonna try to, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bust that dirt loose. So I'm not actually, I know it probably looks in the camera like you're thinking, you know, grab, man, just grab a hold of that thing. That's not really what I'm gonna do. And I'm, I'm trying to get all that dirt off that root ball. That way that root ball and all will burn. Cause these here, none of these, this one in the front that I'm pushing on right now, I could probably get a log out of it. See, I broke that one off the top of the ground. I couldn't. He, uh, I was watching where the skid steer was. He's come into my peripheral vision there, and I thought I was going to shove it on top of him. There we go. Now we got a little cedar in there, too. We're gonna, I'm just going to grab a hold of the butt end of him here and just kind of squeeze on it, and that'll break off that dirt. I got Basically, I got to get to that other tree that I broke off. I need to get to that one so I can dig that root ball out. Here's a little cedar. We'll grab a hold of him and that piece of the root ball. We don't want to be dozing down through there and you run into a half of a stump. Got to sit there and dig that thing out. Then you got to do something with it. Put this over here with our pile that's already been processed. Got a piece of root ball right there. Get him out of there. That way it's out of the way. I'd say he'd probably pull back on this, they'll probably come right out. And not really, will it? Let's step up there a little bit. We'll chew around the sides of him. Get that, get, get that ground clean and cleared out, man. It makes her all a lot easier. I got a little bit of rock pulled out. I think my, I'm hoping in a way, I hope I get into a little bit of rock. I need some. You should just kind of let them bounce a few times. Try to backfill your hole some that way. You don't, the excavator ain't as bad as the skid steer. That skid steer runs in those holes. It can kind of upset him some. this one down now. This hoe here has got a nice backup camera. I can peek in it and see where I'm at. And again, these are the light. This is the, what we're clearing right now is the last of our clearings. We don't have any more to do after this. This is all of it. That's really what I was trying to do is trying to get it all clear, trying to get it all, you know, done. And the only thing I'll have left to do is burn and then hopefully I could come over here periodically through the weekend and keep the fire simmering and then most of it will just burn up. We got to get these big oaks out of here because I need to get them oaks burned. I get them on the fire while it's still good and hot. I wait till Monday to get them out of there then then we're going to be in trouble. The fire is going to be cold. We ain't going to have the heat to burn those because those have been laying there for a little while. They're not rotten rotten but they ain't, they ain't good fresh oak. Now what we're going to do is we'll kind of 
I'm gonna lay this one here out a little bit more. Give me some more room to work. A little oak right there, gotta go. Carry him back with us as we go. You gotta be careful. You'll you'll break something loose in another tree canopy on you. And next thing you know, you got something laying in your lap. I don't see how these people buy these excavators without a sunroof. It's a lot easier on the on the swampers. Swamping ain't easy. That's what we always used to say. The swampers a uh, swamper is your ground man in your clearing job. The swamper is the ground man. Uh, most of the time he runs a chainsaw, cutting up trees or hooking chain or whatever you might need on the ground. That's that's a swamper. He's just like your he's your ground man, your laborer. Swamper is a pretty pretty hard job. Uh, it's labor intensive. Uh, most of the time, you you have a hard time keeping a swamper. Uh, most of the guys don't want to swamp. Uh, I've done my fair share of swamping uh, over the years. I mean, it took me a long time to get to where I was at. I, I sometimes I'd have to swamp, and then sometimes I got to be in the machine, depending on if a well, I'm telling you, I'm having all kinds of issues. That dang old thing landed right in my lap and everything. All right. So, where was I? Swamper, you know, I'd have to do swamp work sometimes, too. Like, I don't, it's not that I don't like it. It's just, you know, I've been years and years and years of having to, you know, own my own business, so I don't do it as much. But I still, I can still swamp. <laughs> I can still swamp with the best of them. I think the saw's getting a little dull. These boys, for some reason, they will not say, hey, sharpen my saw for me. It's getting a little dull. Go ahead. 
ahead and get him up, get him up out of the ground first, then we'll back up and get him and bring him down here with the rest. I got a little pine in behind my tail, so I can't get over as far as I need to. cedar tree, I'm going to keep it for a log. <clears throat> yes. The little cedars, the old man loves them little cedar trees. That's why we, why I keep it. This one, this little pine, this pine right here will make a little log. <coughs> make me something. Turn that into cabin material. Well, we will check back with you guys in a few. I'm going to try, if I can remember, to ever bring me a, another tripod, I'll set my phone outside. I've got a, I've got a GoPro, but I won't hardly use it. It's, uh, I ain't never, never did invest in some really good editing software come on pull out of there so I never have uh, I never have in really invested into some good software I, I don't really know what I'm looking for I don't know what I need so and then just I've kind of been a watching my extracurricular budgets because we're in the we're in the slow times of the year, so I don't want to spend. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money right now. Yeah, I'll definitely, definitely cut that one into a log. That's got some pretty good size to it there. I can get a couple small eights out of that one. Anyway, we'll check back with you guys. Thanks. It's about 10.30, I think, or so. It's starting to rain. So, Oak uh, jumped over there and started filling up the hoe. And uh, Dillinger is finishing, cleaning up, kind of scraping everything off. Uh, we're trying to get everything we can out of there. I need to get them big oaks. Them big oaks, those need a lot of time to burn. So I'm going to try my best to... Uh, as soon as he gets me topped off with fuel, I'm going to jump in the hole there, and I'm going to run down there and get them things out. Run up there and get them things out of that hole at least. Try to get them drugged down here and uh, see if I can. If I had my dozer here, I know they'd come out of there, but I don't have my dozer here. So Oak's getting ready to get her filled up. And we got her far. I got it stoked up. It started raining, so I, I throw some... I throw some good material on there quickly. I hear the fuel thing popped off, so that's my cue. All right, folks, there's them two big oaks. Remember them from the other footage. And uh, this is after we got it all cleared up. Of course, brush is piled to the bottom of the hill because of the wind advisory. It, it ain't rained, but the air is so... Uh, it's not dry, the air's not dry at all. So I, I really, and it ain't really picking up a whole lot. So we went ahead and we've been stuffing some pretty good size, like nasty oak and everything. And Dillinger's down at the bottom of the hill. He's getting everything kind of cleaned up. It's, uh, it's pretty clean. I mean, it's clean enough now to where before we actually start our dozer work, we'll run the dozer down it and uh, peel everything down. We'll use it for like what we call a uh, topping and we'll use it to clean up with at the bottom of the bank. So we'll be in pretty good shape. But uh, Oak's down there. He's uh, waiting. Uh, he's probably going around picking up some sticks, stuff like that, just kicking rocks around. He's, he's a swamper again today. So swampers, uh, they work hard. They work, go at it, go at it, go at it. And then, then uh, whenever the time comes, they kind of get to kick rocks around a little bit, waiting waiting for the next part of the job so but there's where we're at up here on top 
she's uh, she's cleared, so we gotta get everything burnt now, which will take me biggest part of the weekend to coming over and stuff. I'll be burning all day tomorrow, and then I'll burn. I'll come over Saturday, and then I'll come over Sunday and stuff, and keep it kind of just rounded up, keep it burning, so we'll have it all done. But I'll get out to the bottom of the hill here and get a little bit of food. Yeah, that's what she looks like from down here. Still got a lot of brush to burn, I know, but that wind's not too bad. It's blowing, blowing a little bit, but it ain't blowing. Plus, we got a lot of it cleared off, so we should be fine. I, I'm not too, I'm not too awful worried. She looks pretty good. Nice old pool. Back in the day, man, that was a hot spot. I'd say back in the day. Yeah. She cleaned up pretty good. About 11.30 or so. Let's go, uh, let's go get us some lunch. There's my pile of my log. That's my, that's my future. But there's my future cabin. Part of it, anyway. Cut them out of here. There's a lot of them that are too small, but they'll make some flooring or something out of them. I don't know. All right, let's go eat. Let's go get us some lunch. Well, it's starting to rain. I sent the guys on home. They left about about twelve thirty. We ate lunch. We uh, we got everything done. Got everything cleared. Things on the ground. Guys did an awesome job. Uh, I mean, I'm just my guy. I got I got a I got a good group of guys. Um. We all care about each other. We care about the job. We care about each other. We care about production. We care about the direction that that we're going in. And that means a lot. Uh, when you get a group, when you get a group of guys, a group of men, women, if you got women, I, we don't have any women here except Miss K in the office. But uh, when you when you get a group like that together, you uh, it's a chemistry and. Um, could be more proud of them so it's raining and i'm feeding feeding the fire i've been going down there and kind of rousing it up it actually just started raining like actually like there's actual mud now i can look out my window right now i can see mud uh, probably about 25 20, 20 30 minutes ago so i'm gonna grab another big gob of brush i'm over here kind of propped up i had lunch my belly's full and i got a little sleepy um but I'm gonna go down here and stir this fire a little bit, and I'm gonna add a little bit more to it. Uh, I can see from where I'm sitting at, I can see everything. That's kind of the reason why I'm all the way up here. Plus, it gets me backed off the fire some in case it starts wind starts blowing, and it'll actually you know create a big fall of ambers and stuff. But I'll probably put this video together, and I'll go ahead and post it. And then I'll do another follow-up later after we get everything burnt and done and everything. So, but uh, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, like and share. And we got 414 subscribers. I mean, it's better than being poked in the eye of the sharp stick. I'd love to get. I think a thousand is when you actually start uh, making money, or and the money don't even really. I don't really care about that part of it. I just like reaching out and showing my company off and giving my customers uh, future and present customers kind of a view that what goes into their projects uh, how how we operate how our stuff is done you know i just kind of like it i i'm i'm not really a big time bragger i'm really a humble person i just kind of like like the aspect of being able to say you know yeah, if you want to watch your project you know we post videos of it or or if you want to look at a project like yours, you can get on there on the YouTube channel and look it up, and there'll be one on there like yours. So I kind of like that aspect of it. So thanks, guys.